Hello everyone, this is Ron Williams with Web Builder Templates. Uh, today we're going to talk about the custom overflow for a layout grid. Uh, I think this is probably an overlooked uh, feature of the layout grid and wanted to show you how you might be able to use it in your design if the design calls for it. So let's dive right on in. So what I've done here is I've simply inserted a spacer just to give some space between the top of the browser and the layout grid. I've inserted a normal layout grid. Let's take a look at the properties. In this case the properties um, I've set up are I've made six columns uh, that are two apiece. Inside of those as you can see I've inserted the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now what we're going to do in the overflow here is we're going to choose the option of custom. All right. And everything else I'm just going to kind of leave the same. I am going to change the breakpoint. If you saw the other video I did, in this case I'm going to change it to 767. And again, the reason for this is if you look at my breakpoints, my default is currently at 1200. I have a breakpoint at 768 and I have one at 360. I want the layout grids to remain horizontal all the way down until they get to 768. The minute it hits 767, I want the layout grid to flip to vertical. So that's why I'm using that. So we'll hit OK. All right. And if we take a look at my breakpoints here, you can see that it's horizontal. Again, it's horizontal there. And the minute we go to 360, it is now vertical. All right. So how you can use the custom to your advantage in your design is it, it depends on obviously what objects you have in here. I happen to have perfectly square looking images of numbers. So here in the default 1200 and above the numbers look fine. They're all centered. It looks good. The spacing's nice. There's nothing I want to do to change that. When I get to the break point here obviously the numbers have been squeezed. Um, they still look the same size as default and I might be perfectly happy with this layout and say I'm going to leave it that way. But depending on the objects you might have some text in there. If, the, if I had text in there below each of the numbers well you can see that the text is going to be squeezed in a very skinny column and that may not look good. Or I might have a button or something like that. So theoretically I might look at this you know I would love to be able to split this into two rows I would love to have one row where I've got one two and three and then I want a second row where we have four five and six how can I do that well there's a number of ways of doing it you could do some nested grids that would work um, but in this case we're going to use the custom feature of just the one layout grid so here's how we're going to do that we're going to click on this breakpoint. We're going to go into the grid properties. All right. So what we're going to do is this right here where it says columns, this represents the very first and topmost row. Okay. So we have one row where we've got six cells or six grids. So what we want to do is we simply want the first row to only have three grids, the numbers one, two, and three, because we want four and five, six to be on a second row. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these. And we're going to get it down to three grids, one, two, and three. I'm going to go ahead and make these equal. So they stay nice and symmetrical. So I want to make it one row of with three in it. If I simply hit OK at this point, what's going to happen is the numbers 4, 5, and 6, they're hidden. They're gone. You only see 1, 2, and 3, and of course it's equally distributed to how I have it. Let's go back into the properties. To get the second row, we're going to go over here to Settings, click on Settings, and what you're going to see here is grid 1, 2, and 3. You can't, they're grayed out. You can't manipulate you can't touch them, you can't manipulate them. That's because they're right here. They're, you manipulate them, manipulate them right here. However, where the numbers 4, 5, and 6 are at are hidden. So we want to make them visible. If you click on the box, you have an option of how 
y to make that grid. Well, I want it just like the first row. I want them 4, 4, and 4. So I'm going to go ahead and sign that one 4. I'm going to sign number 5, 4, and then the last one 4. Remember, these need to add up to 12 if you want to equally distribute them. So if I hit OK and then hit OK again, you can see that it forms a second row with 4, 5, and 6 in it. So if we go back to the default, we have them spread out on one, one row. By using the custom function, I can create a second row where these three are on a second row below the ones on top. If we go to here, you say, look, you know, I've, there's enough spacing to where I could actually have the numbers 1 and 2 on the same row. I could have 3 and 4 on the same row and 5 and 6. I don't want this long column. I'd rather shorten the column and put in and have spacing two on each row. We can easily do that with the custom. Since we only want two, there's two things we're going to have to do here. As you can see, it's flipped to column. So we're going to have to change our breakpoint. We're going to have to change it to zero. Okay, if we do that, watch. It now, it basically is telling that layout grid we're not going to flip to a column it's always going to stay horizontal it's always going to be a horizontal row which is what we want now since we want two on a row we're going to get rid of all these but two of them okay and then we're going to equally distribute them so remember the number one is in the first column number two is in the second column the columns three four five and six we've removed they're gone, they're hidden. So if I just hit OK, you can see that you just see one and two. All right, but now I want below one, I want three to be here, four to be here, and then below that, I want to go five and six. So to get that, we go back to our properties, click on settings. So for where the number three is in the third grid, we're going to go ahead and set the width. Now, Keep in mind, we want to keep it the same here. So I'm going to assign it a width of 6 for number 3 and the same for number 4. And then for the number 5, I'm also going to do the same thing. Okay. This is one row. One row with two, each one 6. This is the second row, one with each have 6. And then the third row has 6 and 6. If I hit OK, you can now see that I've created three rows with two in it. And if I look at my other breakpoints, you can see now that I've been able, just with one layout grid, able to create different columns and rows without having to use extra grids or nesting of grids. Now, this isn't going to work in every case. Um, it's going to be dependent on your design. but if you can use this to eliminate extra grids and extra markup, it's going to make your code a lot cleaner by doing it this way. The other thing you can do with custom too is, for example, let's say these pictures are all exactly the same size, but let's assume that number five here, this picture, is bigger than the others and it needs a little bit more room here. We can give it more room by just adjusting it in the properties. So if we go back to our properties and click settings. What we're saying is number five here, which is the fifth cell, I need to give it some more spacing. So let me say I want to increase it up to six. Okay. So if number five is going to take up six, and remember this can only be a total of 12. So that means these two number four and number six have to be shrunk down. I have to make them three to keep it equal to 12, six and six. If I hit OK, see what that does? That now creates the first column here on row two is only three across. This is six, or excuse me, this is four across, or six across, three across, six and three. <laughs> 
but it assigns a lot more spacing to number five. And again, you know, this is independent just in that breakpoint. So it does allow you to create more space on a particular object if it needs it for any reason. Um, but of course, you can see that these now aren't aligned anymore. So if it's, you know, again, it depends on your design and what you're doing, um, whether this is something that will work for you. But that's how you use the custom uh, layout. Uh, if you need to use one layout grid, but move objects in different breakpoints uh, to different rows, it's easily easily done. One other thing you could do, let's take this for example. Let's say that I want five to be on a row by itself and six to be on a row by itself. I can simply go into the settings. I want to, since since a grid is 12 columns, I'm going to assign it to be a full 12 columns. And then I'm also going to do the same for 6. And when I hit OK, see, it now makes 5 fill up a whole row as well as 6 because you've assigned it to be 12 columns wide. All right. If you have any questions more about how to use custom, uh, please leave your comments below or shoot me an email. And I appreciate you watching. Thanks very much for watching.